Welcome to Worksheet Cloud, Grade 6 Natural Science. Good morning. My name is Mrs. Hall and I'm going to be teaching you your lesson today. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade6 at worksheetcloud.com. Let's get started. Today's lesson is on separating mixtures. There are a number of different processes that we use to separate mixtures. How do we go about this? Well, when some materials are mixed together, it is possible to separate the mixture and get the original materials back again. There are several different ways of separating mixtures. The best processes to use depends on the type of mixture that you are going to be separating. And today's lesson, we are going to be looking at evaporation and condensation, magnetism, filtering, sieving, decanting, and hand sorting. Are you ready, grade sixes? Let's get going. What is a mixture? A mixture is a substance made by combining two or more different materials in such a way that no chemical reaction occurs. A mixture can easily or usually be separated back into its original components. Some examples of mixtures are a salad, salt water, sugar water, a mixed bag of M&M's candy. Let's take a look. So here we have a bag, mixed bag of M&M &M candy. And oh, some of us only love the blue ones. Some of us only love the yellow ones. So you could separate this bag of M&M's because it's easy to separate them. Put them back to their own little groups of colors. Look at this example of a salad. Right, we have a whole big salad here filled with avo and cucumber and lettuce and tomato. We can mix it all together, make a lovely mixed salad, but then we can separate it back into its original components. We get different kinds of mixtures. The first one we're going to look at is called an homogeneous mixture. Now, an homogeneous mixture is a mixture that you can't distinguish the different components. For example, here we have a puree, we have coffee, we have a milkshake. So let's take a look at coffee. When we look at a cup of coffee, we can't see the different components that make up the coffee. We can't see the sugar, we can't see the milk, we can't see the water, and we can't see the granules of coffee. That is called an homogeneous mixture. We are not able to see the different components. Exactly the same for chocolate, cold tomato soup, and orange juice. Right. Hope I uh, put some of your favorite favorites in there. Strawberry milkshake is definitely one of mine. A heterogeneous mixture. Now, in this kind of mixture, you can distinguish all the components. For example, a salad. I can distinguish. What is the tomato? What is the onion? What is the lettuce? What are the, uh, um, the olives? I can separate them into individual components. Fruit salad. I can see here's my kiwi, here's my banana, here's my watermelon. I can distinguish the different components. The same with paella, chickpea salads over there, or maybe milk and cereal an easy one for you. When you have your cereal, you can quite easily see the cornflakes and the milk. Now, to go back and recap, a mixture contains two or more substances that are not chemically joined together. So they're not bonded together to make a substance. The substance or substances, sorry, keep their own properties. You can usually or easily separate them using physical methods. 
Let's take a look at our first method, filtering. The definition, the scientific language that you need to know at the end of this lesson would be as follows. To separate a liquid and a substance by pouring it through a material like filter paper or a mesh fabric. Let's take a closer look at filtering. This process should be used to separate a mixture of an insoluble solid. Now an insoluble solid is something that is not able to dissolve in water. We say it is insoluble. So we take a mixture of an insoluble solid, something like sand that can't dissolve in water, and a liquid. A funnel is lined with filter paper and placed over a beaker. The mixture is poured slowly into the filter paper. So if you were in class right now, you would have been given a funnel and a piece of filter paper and we would actually be filtering um, different mixtures. Now insoluble solids will not have dissolved in the liquid, like I said earlier, and we're using, using the example of sand here. The solid particles will not be able to get through the, the tiny little holes in the filter paper and they will be caught up in it over here. The liquid particles will go through the filter paper into the beaker below over here. This process could be used to separate a mixture of sand and water. So we are separating a liquid and a solid here but remembering that our solid is insoluble. It does not dissolve in water. If we had a soluble material that dissolved in water, filtering would not work for us. Now, a little bit of homework for you to do. You would have done this in class. Is a home project. Do it yourself this time. You are going to take a two-liter Coke bottle. You are going to cut it in half. Please ask for parental help. Do not do this on your own. Ask mom or dad to help you cut the, the two liter bottle in half. Could be a water bottle, any kind of bottle. Doesn't have to be Coke. And what you're going to do is, can you see over here, the bottom half of the two liter is over here. And this part here, if you turned it around, would be the top part. You take the top part, you turn it upside down, and you put it into the bottom half so that you've got over here the um, where you drink from, the, the mouth part over there, facing inwards into the bottom of the two-litre Coke bottle. Right? You're going to start, obviously, by putting an elastic band <clears throat> or a piece of um, cloth over here in the mouth part, and you can um, use a cloth or cheesecloth or even if you have filter coffee, those filter coffee um, papers, you could even use that here, yeah? put it in here if you wanted to. Um, but the easiest is to just take an elastic band with a piece of cloth and tie it over here, the mouth part. On top of that, you're going to put some very fine sand particles. So you go look for it at home, um, in your garden. Um, if you have a sand pit, that's the best place to look. You will then put a layer of coarse sand, it's slightly thicker, slightly bigger granules of sand than fine sand, and then go through your garden and look for tiny little pebbles or um, rocks, something like that. And grade sixes, you then make yourself a lovely mixture of sand and water, dirty sand and water, and you pour it through your homemade water filter, and the water should come out clear at the bottom of your empty two liter bottle. Lovely little project, easy to do, enjoy it. Our next scientific definition we're going to look at is evaporation. Evaporation is the process of a substance in a liquid state changing to a gaseous state. Now you know what these terms mean liquid state to a gaseous state due to an increase in temperature. Let's take a look at evaporation and condensation. Right, number one. This process is best used to separate solutions. Okay, this is mixtures in which a solid 
has dissolved in a liquid and you can no longer see the solid and the liquid. They've been soluble, they've dissolved, the solid has dissolved into the liquid. You can't tell them apart. As the solid has dissolved in the liquid, filtering, like I said earlier, would not separate the two materials. The solid particles would go through the filter paper along with the liquid. You wouldn't be able to tell them apart. When the solution is evaporated, either through boiling or by being left in a warm place outside on a windowsill, the liquid will turn into a gas and leave the solid behind. There you go. That could be salt crystals, it could be sugar crystals. Number four, if the gas is then condensed on a cool surface, so condensation, the liquid can be recovered and collected too. And we look at that in a lot more detail in grade seven. Examples of mixtures to separate with this process include salt and water or sugar and water. And if we had been at school, we would have made crystals. So for those of you that would like to go ahead and do some research into crystal making, please do so and um, use those crystals, keep them to show your teacher. It's a lovely do-it-yourself do it home project as well and very easy to follow off the internet. The next definition we are looking at is magnetism. Now magnetism is a force that can attract, to attract means to pull something closer to you, or repel, and repel means to push something away. Now, it will either attract or repel objects that have a magnetic material like iron inside them. Those would be considered magnetic objects. In simpler words, grade sixes, it is a property of certain substances which pull closer or repel other objects. Here's an example. You would use this process to separate magnetic materials from non-magnetic materials. And here's your magnets that you would have used in class. A magnet is used to attract any magnetic material and remove um, them from the mixture. You could separate a mixture of copper nails and iron nails using this process. Okay, hope you understand that, grade sixes. The next definition we're looking at is to sieve, sieving. This is when you use a tool with holes that allows pieces of a certain size to pass. And for those of you that help mom and dad with the cooking, like you should be doing now during lockdown, you have all been sieving. So when you make rice, you use a sieve to separate the rice from the water. Right, sieving. We use this process to separate a mixture of different sized solids. The mixture is poured into a sieve held over a bowl. The smaller particles will get through it into the bowl and the larger particles will be caught over here in the sieve. Now, if you were sieving your rice, when you have your rice mixture, after you've cooked it um, in a pot, it's um, got a lot of water in. So you put your whole mixture into the sieve and the water would separate from the rice. And you would just have your rice granules left in your sieve. Mixtures you could separate using this process include raisins and flour or rice and pasta. Lovely. Also a little do-it-yourself experiment at home. If you've got any of those ingredients and a sieve, go ahead. Knock yourselves out. Have some fun with science. Hand sorting. This is a separation technique used to remove the unwanted impurities from the mixture by hand. It involves simply picking out substances by hand and separating them from others. Hand sorting methods can be used when items differ on the basis of color, shape and weight. And a good example for those of you that love playing marbles, 
you could use hand sorting to separate your marbles over here. You could separate the blue ones from the yellow ones. I know some of you call them shinies. There's all sorts of fancy names that you guys use for your marbles. But that would be an easy way to use hand sorting as a technique to separate different mixtures. Decanting. Decanting is to carefully tilt the container and pour off the top layer of a mixture. Let's take a closer look. Over here, this process can be used to separate two liquids that have different densities, like oil and water. The mixture of liquids is left to settle, so we leave it for a while, so that the two liquids are visible as two different layers. And a very common one that you all know is oil and water. The oil floats on top and the water is at the bottom. The less dense liquid will be the top layer. That would be your oil. And this can be decanted or slowly poured off. It's quite difficult to do when we do it in class. The children, they battle a little bit. It takes patience and perseverance. This process could be used to separate a mixture of oil and water. So this is using uh, the process of decanting to separate two liquids. Grade sixes, thank you for watching this lesson. I hope you learned something new. I hope I've inspired you to hit the kitchen to help with the cooking so that you can get to sieve tonight. And for those of you that are very keen to make your crystals, please do and um, go ahead and. Um, Keep them to show your teachers when you get back to school. Um, I know my grade sixes, um, they are going to be making crystals at home as part of their homework activity for me. And um, obviously my, my, my best project that I wanted you to do at home for this specific lesson is to make yourself a water filter at home. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Have a great day, grade sixes.